So we have all that potential, but unfortunately, till now, we don't, it takes time, mm -hmm. but uh, it should be not too much time because there is no time, <laughs> especially with the era of AI, with all that revolution is happening. So there is no time to wait. But in general, uh, just based on uh, your questions, that three things, the humanized, the localized, and personalized, that three triangles, we have to utilize it very well if we want to go deep and understand our culture and to deliver the best brands for ourselves, for our children, and even for future. This is Let's Make Waves podcast. I'm your host, Rana Al-Basri Marwad, and I believe that we're all here to make waves. I created this podcast to help you build your brand by sharing with you tools, resources, and strategies to gain professional authority for better business opportunities. If you want to get unstuck, you've come to the right place. Let's get started. Have you ever found yourself wishing for a roadmap to navigate this complex world of brand building? You know, if you had that perfect guide with all the secrets and the essential factors, all of them laid down, where it can help you understand what are the determining factors to a brand's success or its downfall in today's dynamic market. If that is the case, then this episode is tailor-made for you. And I must say, it holds a special place in my heart this week. First, because it marks a milestone for Let's Make Waves podcast as we welcome our first guest speaker. And I'm really excited about this. Um, secondly, it's because I'm also thrilled to, to introduce you to our esteemed guest, Jafar Hamza, a branding expert hailing all the way from the Kingdom of Bahrain. In this episode, Jafar graciously um, shares his wealth of knowledge and experience in the realm of branding, where he addresses the most pressing questions about what truly drives a brand to its success in this evolving landscape. So he doesn't only stop there. He, is, he also offers invaluable insights into branding strategies specific for the Middle East region, but also providing that global perspective. Now, before we dive into our enlightening conversation that I had with Jafar, please allow me to give you a brief introduction to this remarkable individual and his extensive work in case you are not already familiar with him. Um, Jafar Hamza is the founder of Booksobia, a renowned brand strategy and design communication house based out of Bahrain. He's also an accomplished author, writer, and speaker with a passion for creativity and communication. With a bachelor's in engineering, an MBA, and an MOAR, he is curr currently pursuing his PhD, and he's also the recipient of the Silver Award from the Creativity Awards in New York, as well as being the first Bahraini in receiving a Level C certificate from the U.S. in brand strategy. As an accomplished author, Jafar has published six books, one of which is available in Amazon, and he is the co-author of a book about entrepreneurship and startups. He's also working on finishing two more books that are currently now in the pipeline. He is a highly skilled industrial design product conceptualizer. He's worked in fields of healthcare, water, perfume, self-improvement, and worked with international agencies such as Saatchi and Saatchi, JWT, and with international brands such as Kleenex, Bentley, Formula One, and Aramco. With an extensive body of work, Jafar has written tens of articles in both English and Arabic about branding, innovation, and marketing. You can experience all of his extensive work on LinkedIn, on his YouTube channel, as well as SoundCloud, where he presents book reviews about design, branding, and innovation. He's also the co-founder of Finico, the first bilingual podcast that highlights all new aspects related to the financial sector from AI to CX and branding. Additionally, he is also the creator of Serovia, the new Arabic-Chinese calligraphy. As a lecturer in branding, innovation, and marketing, Jafar shares his knowledge and experience with students to inspire them to reach their full potential. I'm not going to keep you waiting any longer. I hope you enjoy to th this week's episode, and I hope you enjoy my conversation with Jafar Hamza. Jafar, 
you are um, an engineer by education. You've done a major uh, career shift to branding, to marketing, to, um, you know, to everything to do with creative design and all of that new industry. But it was just not a normal shift. It was such a very important shift in your life. You're now even working on your PhD, which is something that is very commendable. I mean, your journey is, 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 um, is very fascinating. What was the reason that inspired this shift and made you who you are today, an expert in your field? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the name of God. Uh, thank you, uh, my, my sister, Rana, for this opportunity. And I think uh, regarding the engineering thing, which is, uh, I think it's like a, like a common with my friends when they start as engineering, but they end up with an artist, some of them doing some, for example, a journalist, some of them doing something far, far away from engineering. But what's the common is as follow. It's a logic thinking. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm, uh, even I started as an engineer, by the way, I, my, my first job it was in Kimberly Clark, one of the wow. biggest, uh, <laughs> yes, Olayyad Kimberly Clark in Bahrain as a general engineer, because my background is electrical and electronics uh, engineer. Mm-hmm. And uh, still uh, this type of what I call the mindset of engineering embedded in my DNA, embedded in my blood. And I uh, seeing, uh, seeing things from the engineer, engineering perspective, which is, what I call it analyzes, uh, analyzing things, or what yeah. I call it re-engineering uh, things again. And from that uh, perspective, I joined to Ministry of Industrial and Commerce uh, in, in what I call it industrial design okay. and the patent office. From that, uh, starting the love of creativity and innovation, I got an international diploma from WIBO, which is World Inter- uh, Intellectual Property Organization, and that was the starting seeds to merge between two DNA, the DNA of engineering and DNA of creativity. I merge it together and come up with what I call it uh, structured creative. I don't know if it's that, uh, uh, what they call it, correct uh, uh, terminology, but it's like uh, you merge between some, uh, like, um, something solid and something liquid. Yeah. It's, it's too hard. But for me, it was a long journey within 20 years when I started engineering from university up to now, which is I have my own business. Um, I went through a couple of obstacles and a couple of mind shift, how I'm as engineer with a structure, with organized, with logic, with zero ones, to something like liquid with creativity and innovation, and going deep to the human behavior it's like uh, upside down, but uh, I come up with a gray area, which is, I can say, 100%. Both of them is like two faces for one thing. For one like coin. Two, it's like, yeah, the two yes, sides to the coin. same coin. Wow, that, that's, that's, that, that's our assets as a human. You yes. can say I'm purely engineer, I'm purely creative. By the way, we are both, but not like uh, Mr. Jekyll and Hyde. Of course, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but we are we are uh, as a human being we have both sides. Yes. Yes, and I really love about that because it kind of gives you that, um, you know, it's like a holistic approach. You see things from different angles, which I believe really from <laughs> from the work that I've seen that you've done, um, really given given you um, the uh, the tools. So that you yes. can, you actually, through your work, you you share a lot of different perspectives, and we we're, we're gonna go deep into that. But you know, you've just mentioned you've been you've been in that growth and career shift for the past twenty years, and you've you have extensive experience in the MENA region. In your opinion, what are the most notable trends or trend shifts that have happened in branding and marketing in the region that you see as a positive evolution? Um, to to the landscape. How do you feel about that? I, I can say like three to four words, which is humanize, localize, and even I call it I call it personalize. What's that mean? Uh, before maybe fifteen years, or almost seventeen years, when I'm working with big agencies such as uh, James Walter Thompson and James Walter Thompson, what they call JBT, the first ad agency in the world, and uh, yeah. their age almost one hundred years, same as Coca Cola. And uh, uh, they focus more, 
about uh, creative and uh, communicate with people. But unfortunately, the localization is not there. So True. that's why it's, uh, that, uh, that's why they you know they import uh, some experts from outside. Okay, and uh, and that's uh, that was the challenge, uh, how they can um, uh, understand the local culture, but from different perspective, from foreign uh, perspective. And was that the gap mm -hmm. between the local understanding and the global brands? Mm -hmm. So, but after that, I think uh, there are many opportunities happening now in, in the region, which is, I call it the, the localization, which is you can take that knowledge from the experts, even the, uh, if they are foreign with all respect to uh, foreign nationalities, and uh, they can localize, uh, localize, localization. Uh, yes. localization. Okay, yeah. so to, to make the local taste, local understand, local culture, to be more um, close to, to what they call it, internal uh, community. That's number one. Humanize means uh, to become more not toward products, more towards the brands, and they are too much different. Absolutely, I agree. I agree products, with products, you. With brand, brand, with values, with myths, with message, with culture, with creating your own tribe, is too much deep, it's too much to human size, more to the functional side. And that's why uh, they say, uh, uh, focus about the value you deliver to your customer more than the functionality of the products because the functionality it can copy cut the values cannot be that's what even steve jobs uh, say uh, i think one of his uh, uh, talks um, and the last one uh, i said uh, localize then um, humanize and then we have the third one which is personalized which we call it the age of influencers now yeah before before the case or even more um, we have the typical classical advertisement which is online and offline now it's more about the individuals who can create more tribes strong tribe either quantity or quality they have the power to influence more than even the big companies yeah and that's more why than the brands yeah that's why big brands coming to the influencers because they will become their ambassadors in a way or another because they influence people at the end of the day as Peter Decker said the, uh, the main thing for any business is to create customer and keep them. And keep them. It's not just create, which is the sustainability. Yeah. How can create and keep the customers if I don't know them, if I don't close to them, if I don't understand them as a global or as a local or as a regional uh, brands? Of course, I have to go to know the leaders between the brackets or the influencers who have the influencing to the people so I can communicate with them through him or through her. So that's the age, what they call the age of personal brand. Yes. That's the power of what they call it, uh, the power of uh, in the individual, uh, individualism, yeah. so, uh, which is led to individual. That's the th three things, humanize, localize, and the personalize. That's the three things which is about the positive thing. But of course, I always, as engineer, <laughs> yes, <always> see. <laughs> you you want to improve. You always there is, a, and that would be my <laughs> next question. Positive. Yeah, yeah. This is the positive and the negative thing is unfortunately we are under the we are in the stage one point five. What's that stage one point five? So we have three stages. Number one, number two, we are as a prosumer, and number three, we are as a producer. Now in Arab region, we are enter between consumer and prosumer. What's that prosumer mean? Prosumer means you become producer plus consumer at the same time. Jafar, do you mind saying the three again? Uh, just sure. in case, sure. yeah. Sure. Number one, what they call it consumer. Purely consumer, we are, cons we are consumption's community. Whatever that products coming from East or, or West, we just consume it. That we call it consumer. Mm -hmm. Okay, and number two, they call it prosumer. You can Google it. Prosumers mean you are a producer and consumer at the same time. I will give you an example. And number three, you are a producer. Okay, we okay. are in the age of 1.5. I don't say two because till now we are not purely prosumer. Yeah. Okay, because because the mentality of even the re-engineering 
in Arab regions, very few, maybe two to three Arab countries, they have maybe 20 to 40 percent of re-engineering. I will not name any countries. You can Google it, <laughs> okay, uh, without any sensitive. Uh, so we are in 1.5, which is good, but yeah. we have to speed it up. We have to speed it up. Prosumer, just even in a small level, if you have 3D printer at your home, mm. you become a, like a prosumer. And, yes. and even the mindset of prosumers is a big threat for big companies, especially, especially cars. Why? Because, for example, if there's a plastic damage in my engine, some part of the plastic, so instead of going to the main dealer, I can I can create it at home. Mm -hmm. That's true. With a 3D printer, okay? So instead of spend 20 or 40 US dollars, I can just spend $5. And even what they call the ink, not the ink, the, the material that can use it for the 3D, instead of even taking from the main source, I can take it from recycled plastic. Mm -hmm. That's right. the mindset of recycling and producing. So you become, you uh, you are a producer at home. You can create the plastic for your car uh, parts or for some gift or for, for some toys. Uh, so that, that's the way they call it. They they are afraid of you become independent. Yes. That's they call it consumer. And you know, all, the all the prosumers tools is available, by the way. Either 3D pen, 3D printer, just name it. Yeah, which which kind of, you know, to if I look at your, um, you know, the positive things that you saw that you you see in the market today, especially in the MENA region and it's how it revolves around how the new, uh, at least in the past 15 years, the, the new talents and new local talents that are coming out, they're not just coming out with the skill to evolve or for the market to grow but they are they are also coming up with the um with the um, uh, type of thinking or the direction of thought for them to um uh, how can i say for them to um put the uh, consumer the local consumer in the center of their of their creative process this is when you're looking at as a company but also for them as you know consumers themselves they are looking at the um, uh, you know the brands that is around them not just from the the typical direction that you said which is just consumption but also right. they are you know uh, reimagining different ways of them putting their creative uh and, and by the way we, yeah and by the way we can apply that or reflect that or mirroring that not just about the physical things even about uh, the digital platforms which is yeah. now we have a good things that's happening between saudi arabia and Emirates, which is uh, I, I i can see it like a, a very health combat uh, competition okay for example leave 24 is happening in Riyadh last time and before that, there's, a, I think, a global govern, uh, government summit in Dubai. All these things being bong happening uh, is healthy for all of us, not just in GCC countries, not just in Arab countries, all world, because this type of what I call it tsunami, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, tsunami of knowledge and experience is very good. And that push us to go to 1.5 to, to stage two, which is a prosumer, because at the end of the day, just to be frankly speaking, what's all that's happening, at the end of the day, all that platforms we use, all that the digital knowledge, even what they call it open source, all coming from, with my respect, coming from the West. The West. It's not that's from us. Okay, that's true. Okay, but how we can utilize it, how we can cooperate to shift that stage from 1.5 to number three. Yeah. Uh, so to number three, which is we have to create our own platforms. Then now we, we are just, I'll give you one, some, what they call disclaimer. Yes. Saudi Arabia has based on facts and figures. They are one of the most consumptions countries for cosmetic. Okay. That's based and on numbers, now, yeah. Yes. And, uh, and till now we don't have like independent Saudi brands. Okay. Just for all GCC. Mm -hmm. And when the Saudi Arabia ban Barbie, who will come in the stage? In, in Saudi Arabia, full the alternative, <laughs> the, alter yes, the, the alternative, okay, you know, this is another option. So we have all that potential, but unfortunately, till now we don't 
ان شاء الله we will go to stage number three yeah the well, infrastructure yes it takes times mm-hmm. but uh, it should be not too much time because there is no time <laughs> especially with the, the uh, era of AI with all that revolution is happening so there is no time to wait but in general um, just based on uh, your questions that three things the humanized the localized and personalized that three triangles we have to utilize it very well if we want to go deep and understand our culture and to deliver the best brands for ourselves for our children and even for future yeah and then you know you might even take it global that's the that's the whole yeah. thing yeah it's it's great that today i think we are at a time where the budgets are there the infrastructure is being built the talent is there because this there's there's so much talent that is in the region that we we already have and we can cross talent as well so it's not just the talent within one country it's a region of many countries so you can like cross pollinate talents so the potential is there the infrastructure is being built it's just a matter of you know the the right steps and the right support that that it needs and i i i really want to take that more and you know to really benefit from your expertise when it comes especially to to brand and to um um to everything to do with not only with the brand but also with the reputation with marketing the brand with everything around that i want to start our key discussion point and this is based on something that Actually, this is one of your amazing, amazing articles that I, I I very much enjoyed reading. You've recently published something, which is the uh, uh, published an article that is called it was titled "Designing Brand Success." Now, within this article, what you've done is that you've wrote that in today's competitive market landscape, and for businesses to stand out and create a distinctive presence. One approach that you propose in this article is to is the integration of human centric design (HCD), product centric design (PCD), and market centric design, which is MCD. These three uh, these three uh, centric design approaches they have to all be integrated into the brand strategy. And in your point of view, when that happens. When those the trifecta happens, um, yeah. this will have a significant. Uh, this will explore significant um, uh, growth when it comes to. Uh, sorry, one second. Yes, it will have. This article also explores the significance of each design approach and how they collectively contribute to awareness, adoption, and advocacy. Now, I really very much enjoyed this article because it goes into, it actually has a point of view where it goes into very precise, actionable um, strategies using those three three points um, and three principles that actually can make a brand. And you were very much open about like a brand successful can we break that down because that's a lot of that's a lot of, of really heavy terminology how can how can we explain it yeah, easier yeah uh, first of all thank you because you have time to reach my article and uh, i'm a big fan so the- <laughs> please <laughs> so for for this one is uh, by the way i just add another one i will i will share it with you now <laughs> okay yes uh, please that's a uh, that's the uh, first one here <laughs> The reason behind it, because as uh, just back to, to to square one, which is the engineering thinking. Mm-hmm. So when when I think about brand, which is embedded with marketing, with the human behavior, with, with our ROI, with all that terminology related to business, because at the end of the day, if we are thinking about business, you split your mind for two things, which is revenue and impact. Absolutely. Yeah, that's usually the top uh, the top points of thinking. Yes. Yes, because some business they say just revenue. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you will create an impact, mm-hmm. indirect or indirect. Uh, okay. So in nutshell, revenue and impact. So we'll come back to BCD and uh, HCD and MCD. Each one of them they have an output or focus, and all that elements which I will explain now. It will create trouble, trouble A, which is it's already there before, before mm-hmm. I even uh, write the article. Okay, and after that, it will be what, what I call it uh, the quality manager or management tools 
which is the Aziz, which we will talk about later on. Mm-hmm. Okay. So BCD, the output of BCD, what they call it, product-centric design. Mm-hmm. When I say the product, it's not purely means product, product or service. Usually in some terminology about some papers or even books or even lectures, when they say product, they mean product slash service. Or mm-hmm. they call it P and P and S, mm-hmm. product or service. So product uh, BCD product centric design. The output is you have to focus about two things: USB, which is unique selling point or unique selling proposition for your product or for your service, and the other one R and R and R R and D research R&D. and development. Yeah, because at the end of the day, if I have a product, but I don't have selling point for this product, at the end of the day. I will not continue at the market because it will be high competition with all that competitors. And I will see myself in Red Ocean in a state of the ocean. Absolutely. So if there is no USB, you will sailing in Red Ocean. And it's very dangerous. That's number one. What about R&D? R&D is like an extra engine. It's like a nitros you put in your engine, <laughs> your sport car. It could speed up. And that's unfortunately very few of our companies, even the small when they're aware or conscious about R&D. R&D is not me. You have to put like a lab and researchers. No, not that the typical thing which is coming from the military, you know, uh, background, which is the, the core or what they call the startup from, from R&D uh, as a terminology. No, 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 not necessarily. R&D means even you have to get the feedback to test your product again and again using design thinking, which is available now with all that five stages for uh, for brand, uh, for design thinking. Mm-hmm. And it's all available and uh, cost effective. So for BCD, it's more focused about your product or your, your services. And you have to come up with two things, USB, unique selling proposition, and R&D. That in nutshell, of course, there are many things I want to talk about, but that in nutshell. What about its CD? At CD, we have another two parts, internal and external, which is they call human-centric design. Yeah. Internal, as Richard Branson said, your first customer is your employee. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, some, uh, I, I don't have uh, statistics here, but based on my experience and with, with all clients or uh, in touch with them, they focus more about the external customer, what they call it, the end users more than the internal customer is our employee. And we have a big gap here because at the end of the day, your first ambassador is your employee, not your customer. Absolutely. So we don't focus more about the, the internal organization or they call it the internal, or they call it brand culture internally. I can't reflect that outside. It's like the example. Just before a couple of days, I have a meeting in one of my clients in Saudi Arabia, and I asked the, the CEO if he used the service of his company for his kids. It's something to, related to educational sector. He said, no. I said, come on. Why? He don't have any strong reason. So <laughs> that's very weird. Why don't you, if you don't believe in your product, your service, how we can reflect that or mirroring that to your internal customer, which is your stuff, and mirroring that to your external customers. So that's a big gap. It is, yeah, to start I agree. believing your cause, reflecting you, then you can reflect to others. So it's see it will be internal to taking care about your brand culture internally, because if one of your employees, they are not satisfied that it will be like a, a bad virus, okay? It will be spread around your organization, it will affect the productivity, et cetera, et cetera. And the same thing will be effect in your customers, the end user. The external should be end user. And end user, we have to take in care, about, in care about two things, CX and CJ, which is customer experience and customer journey. Mm-hmm. And customer journey will be UX and UI and, and many things, which is breakdown. We have to list it down and see if they are satisfied and satisfied. And if they are satisfied, why are they are satisfied? Then why are they are not satisfied? And we have to take all what they call it DDD. Sorry, I'd say just a couple of <laughs> terminologies. No, no, please. No, please. Please, go ahead. DDD, which is data decision driven. Without data, you cannot take any decision. Mm-hmm. Back, back to engineering. 
okay? You have to three states. You have input, you have process, you have output. If I, if I don't get the feedback from the customers based on what I can take, like, new decisions, I don't have any feedback. I don't have input. So there is no process. There is no output. As simple as that. So the main things now in our era is D, D, D. Mm -hmm. Data decision driven. Always collect, always eat <laughs> all that data for 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 uh, for your sector and for for uh, for the product and service and for the competitors. Looking always to the numbers and facts and figures. Even if you are working, for example, just just an example, if you are working in gold sector or cosmetic, read about geopolitics. What's happening in your region? What's related between geopolitics and cosmetic? Yes, of course, it will affect. Because if there's like a new regulations of maybe there is something negative or positive about some uh, country that will affect in, in your uh, in your sector. I don't want to complicate things, but always as a business, you have to open your eyes and you open your ears and before that open your minds and read more and just to take. And that's why the difference between who's sailing in the blue ocean, because he up to date, he see things differently and he sustain and he innovate and discover more opportunities comparing with others. I'll give you a small story. Yeah, I agree with that, totally. I'll give you a small story uh, that happening in Bahrain with me, with, when, with one of the biggest real estate, not just in Bahrain, in, in, in the MENA region. What's happening is just, I'm knocking the door. I just read the newspaper and see there's like a new potential happening with this big company. I say to my team, please just do some gift to, to to this brand we just do some uh, like small cinematic logo animation with the music just a small gift knock the door to them we knock the door for that uh, big uh, real estate and they said yeah please welcome what's happening i said i have this presentation i have this gift to you and uh, he mr ahmed his name said oh i just i'm looking for you for a couple of days i don't find your number but subhanallah you're now <laughs> at my office yes please just go ahead after that, after knock the door for free, and even my friend said, you are crazy, this is a big company, maybe they have four to five agencies. You yeah. are just you are tiny, okay? You are like a small ant compared with elephants there. I said, okay, that's ants uh, can do. Uh, uh, Mighty things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so <laughs> after that, we get five mega projects from this company. From small this is gifts. fantastic. Why? Because to read, to know what's happening in your country. I'm um, something um, updating in terms of facts and figures happening in government, what's happening in politics, what's happening in, uh, in economy, environment, it's all related. It's all related. You have just to, what they call it, to see the right patterns so you can see the gap and from the gap you can see the opportunity. So that's um, uh, to answer a question about uh, uh, the BCD and the CD. And the last one, uh, yes. by the way, what I said now, it's related to the last one, which is MCD, which is yes. market centric design. You have to see the STV, which is segmentation and targeting to find your positioning. And of course, to see the competitive advantage and competitive edge with your competitors and up to date technology, up to date news, up to date uh, regulations that's happening in your country. It's all related. So that's we have BCD, output is USP and RD. And we have HCD, we have internal and external for customers. And we have MCD, which is STV, which is segmentation and targeting and positioning. All these together, by the way, is come up, come up with the marketing uh, stage with uh, three A's, which is you have to create awareness about your brand without mm -hmm. awareness nobody will know about, about you. Then we have to talk about adapt. Yes, there's an action. They will take your uh, product or service. What they call it, Ida, even from seventies. Yes. Is, uh, uh, attention, interest, desire, then action. Then we have advocacy, which is very rare in our can uh, in our countries and our region. Very rare, but we have a huge potential. But then now it's not utilized, and uh, and there are for each one of the BCD and CD and um, MCD, it's related to what they call it uh, uh, triple R's. What's that? For BCD. I just write it down here. For BCD, you will get ROI, return of investment. I, yeah, that's very well known. For HCD, you will get a return of customers. Mm -hmm. And for MCD, will you get 
ار او ار ريتين اوف ريبيتيشن وتس ذا براند ايكويتي ذاتس يا That's not written in my article, by the way. Just update. No, it. no, no. I, I love, I love how you've also included that. And this is the thing. I mean, you've, you, what you've done in this. It's like anybody who is now having a, a you know, a business or working in an organization. They, these are things that um, sometimes people think about it when they're, you know, when they're starting a business. It's part of the business plan. Okay, so we, we want to call our company this brand these are the customers what what we mainly care about is this is my product my bro my product is the best not all the time there is proper data not all the time there's a lot of other details that you you really need from the market but i know there's a need for it and you know this is my sales team and let's go ahead i want to sell it mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of what you've done is that you're saying today for us to be a sustainable business for yes. a an organization to to become a sustainable organization and sustainability is not only about number of years of existence but it's also right. the sustainability of growth growth vertically horizontally and whatever the 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 company wants to do that um there has to be that cycle of these three important the trifecta as you called them in your article the cycle of these three major uh, uh points where it will keep the brand alive but it's the brand is not static there's the internal people and the external people there's the products and the evolution of the product and making it and this is this is amazing this is what i really love about about this article you 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 concentrate on this with the as you said at the end of your your answer to something that will create the awareness the um uh, you know the three e's as you call them yeah. the awareness the adoption and the advocacy and you've said a point that i agree with you and that is regarding advocacy it's still in the infant stages yeah. Uh, there is potential. Uh, these are your words. There is potential, and there is, yes. as you, I'm, I'm sure you're going to tell us, the advocacy, internal advocacy, employee advocacy, uh, beautifully explained by how you said. You know, you gave us the example of this education uh, um, organization and how, if internally we don't believe in the product, then how or how do we put it to the to the team? But also the most importantly, the external advocacy, which is our customers becoming our marketing tool you know yeah. Yeah. so where do you see the potential if it's still in its infant where is the potential do you think people are now understanding its importance or um or they're they're now understanding that without it the sustainability of the business and the brand cannot uh, cannot oh. be there my, my asset will be in two parts the first part talking about the, the mind shifts happening I think for last five years, mm -hmm. I'm talking about the GCC. Um, before they uh, think about uh, the products, what they call product, products oriented only. As you said, we have a best product. Uh, they don't care about the website. They don't care about the social media. They don't care about uh, how the customer service should be in up to date. Um, uh, all that relation, what they call it, the uh, intelligence uh, and, and what they call it, the uh, social intelligence. Mm -hmm. They don't use it. But recently, I figure out there's a, I, I can just th uh, draw in my mind that uh, there's an exponential happening in three in three areas. The first area is to focus more about look and feel for yeah, their product the and service. Aesthetics, the aesthetics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For example, we have book companies just for a couple of months. They're taking care about their logo, even they are from 70s. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they said, okay, it's become like a trend. Even the marketing manager, she's a lady. She told me because because it's trend. The terminology is wrong, but I know what she said. What yeah, she what she said, meant. What she said, yeah, what she meant is right, but the terminology is wrong. So we're talking about we are not talking about the trends. We're talking about the mind shift. We're talking about um, uh, one eighty degree uh, changes uh, changes happening in our um, in our, in our market. So the look and feel means uh, the brand identity. The visual communication, all the touch points, either online or offline. That's the area number one. Area number two, talking about the marketing and taking care about influencers, about the customers, about the getting feedback. 
and stage number three is more, what is now maybe 10%, maybe even five, talk about brand strategy. Mm. It's more in deep. Why? Because in brand strategy, you will touch what I call it the uh, red area for them. Why? Because when talking about brand strategy, that's me. You will sit with the CEO, you will sit with the decision makers, and you have courage to say, please, this one is not right. <laughs> if you want to success. So head by head, it's not easy for an organization to open the doors and say, okay, please, you know, critique me. <laughs> no, yeah, it's not of easy. Course. Okay. Except some, uh, some uh, open-minded uh, organization, which is I found it in Oman, in Bahrain, and even Saudi Arabia, when just dealing with a couple of clients. They said, yes, we want to change. Even if you uh, challenge us, please challenge us. Mm. That, that's a, a very positive thing. That's about the positive change. So that's three areas. So talking about uh, advocacy, now uh, many of uh, companies, at least what I'm reading about, what I'm dealing with them, they want to focus about advocacy more. Why? Because they're thinking ahead. At the end of the day, if you, even if you think just uh, numbers, if you focus and invest in advocacy, you will save money, you will save effort, and you will create your own tribe as Simon Sinek said, okay, because it will be sustained. I just, uh, I have a new interview with, uh, maybe you see that the teaser thing, uh, talking about how bank can create their own reputation mm -hmm. and how they can measure it. Why I'm selecting banks? Because banks, they have bad reputations. Yes, they do. All around, <laughs> all around the world, okay? <laughs> so that in interview, it will be in Arabic. Uh, with one of the biggest uh, local uh, bank here in Bahrain, NBB, National Bank of Bahrain. So it was very challenging with Mr. Hisham, he's my friend. So when talking about advocacy is one of the biggest challenges that uh, we face. Why? Because we are not dealing, unfortunately, with the brands as edge to edge. We have been to be, yes, we have been to say, okay, come on, we are human to human. Yeah. Okay? So we are not like a robotics Okay, you with fine line with the, all this disclaimer. Come on, there's a gray area we can deal with the human, even if we can just ignore some something here and there, just to keep the momentum of our relationship, our authenticity, our what they call it, our culture. Even talking about Arab and Muslims, okay, we have that a big open minded to how we can deal with others uh, with with good um, intention. So. We have, number one, to think about edge to edge, very deep, number one. Number two, we have to create something outstanding experience for our, um, for our customers. And number three, we have to read the DDD, which is the feedback from them. It's not just uh, a survey, good or not. No, 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 no. We have to take that in consideration and be serious because at the end of the day, who will pay your salaries is your customer. <laughs> That's a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yes. So I just wonder, wondering if they are paying our sales. Why well, don't care about them? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and the feedback I, that you I, that you yeah. get from the customer goes back to the R and D, which was what were, what you were saying before. Yeah, and and from the feedback, we have to apply at least kaizen. You know the kaizen, the Japanese absolutely you know, yes. uh, strategy. How to uh, what they call it continuous improvement, even small steps. Okay, yes. and I get uh, I get certificate from <laughs> for for the kaizen, so I apply it in my my job. So uh, so we have all we have all the tools. We have just to take care of that. At the end of the day, we want to create what I call it. If you want to create advocacy, you have to create a tribe. As simple as that. I agree with you. Yeah. If you create your own tribe, they will become your ambassadors. They will fight for you, even if you are not in the field. That's what we need. How we can create a tribe is very easy, but it's very hard to apply. Very easy as a concept, very easy as a tools, very easy as a strategy, but it's very hard because we are dealing with emotions. We are, taking, we are talking about humans. Mm -hmm. So especially in Arab and, 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 and in Islamic culture, it's very easy because we have com common values, we have common things, that we can build and direct build on directly uh, during Ramadan. Now we are in holy month of Ramadan. Yes, uh, Ramadan of you know uh, um, uh, the month of blessing, giving, 
all these things is happening. We, we can just, we have to understand our culture, understand our values, and to market it internally so we can marketing globally. Unfortunately, during Ramadan, it's hijacked. Sorry to say that uh, words. It's hijacked. <laughs> it's hijacked to to create more consumptions mindset in Holy Month, which should be more giving more than consumptions. Mm, consumptions of our time, consumption of our products and foods, and uh, <laughs> even our programs in our daily life is just mind shift. They just hijack the values of Ramadan and become more more consumptions month compared with other album month. Yeah. So, Talking about advocacy, we have to deal about the humans. We have to understand them more. Demography, psychography, all that is available now. Like what they call it consumer behavioral. And based on that, we can create our strategy to create our own tribe. Okay. That's in a nutshell how we can create advocacy. Yes, yeah, that's for, for, yeah, for and it's uh, and it's definitely beyond the um, you know the, a lot of a lot of uh, companies sometimes they what they do is a referral program, and they're like that's advocacy. You like our product, refer a friend, you know, and it's like a referral program could be like an an incentive which is part of the advocacy, but it's not the actual advocacy when it comes to. Uh, it, 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 yes. it, you know, sort of on trap. Just I'll give you an example. No? The, yes, the best please. example, the best example of advocacy, is football clubs. Yes, yes. Please, well, can you elaborate on that, please? Yes. For example, we are in Bahrain, a small island, and we have fans for Barcelona or for Manchester or for Liverpool. That's what I just remember. okay. And they are not Spanish. Their mother, they are not Spanish, okay, <laughs> and they are not originally from Spain. But they are fighting. Fanatics. Are fighting. Fanatics. <laughs> yes. Something their blood and their heart and their mind for such a thing like for this club or for that club. Why? And even the and they don't even their products. What's their products? The t-shirt? Maybe it's made in China. Come on. So <laughs> it's more than that. It's about the values, it's about um, common values that make them to be contact and to be connect with that club, what's that all that means for yeah, the for, to belong. Uh, for the players, they, they belong for the players, for the captain, for the coach, for the field, for even for the language, for the culture, for everything. Even because I'm I'm coming from a small village, they call it Malikia here in Bahrain. I'm very famous about what they call it the uh, what they call it the Western Night. The Western. Why? Because we are. Yeah, why? Because we are very um, famous about uh, playing football since childhood. Okay, <laughs> so mo most of my you know families and friends and, um, and neighborhoods, all of them they are playing uh, playing football. football. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's from, since childhood. So that and they're embedded in their blood about you know all that uh, uh, football clubs all around the world. Coming back to the advocacy. Um, this is just an example. This clubs, they don't send products. Where are their products? T-shirt, cups. It's not original even yet. <laughs> it's all fake, yeah, made in China. But it's still, the I call it the magnetic of football clubs. It's it's embedded in all uh, people all around the world. Most of them because they are uh, loving soccer or they call it football. That's number one. Number two, the type of marketing mm -hmm. and um, and uh, will emphasize more between time to time. See, football is not like, for example, uh, like Formula One. Formula yeah. One, maybe one to no, two times, you know, per year. Football is like every day. Yes. You know, from league to league, there's another league. So, <laughs> so it's a never end. Okay. So, and you have many options, you have many clubs, you have um, uh, many stars. Okay, you have different language, different nationalities. And it's like, I think we have to study uh, as a brand strategist, maybe it might be this next article, uh, how we can take lessons from the football clubs to create a strong brands. What make football clubs outstanding, even from five years old 
to 50 years old. Mm-hmm. All of them, they are ta- attached with football clubs, even if they are not from the same country, by the way. Why? Yeah, and they uh, feel that kind of belonging. They feel like yes. they are part that's of a special belonging. club. Yes, that's belong. what you said, This uh, the, the magic wall. That belonging is the cornerstone of any tribe. If you create that tribe, you will get, you will get the advocacy. And we can't do that without doing the belonging, which is the common value. What even Samson said many times, you have to think about the common values that attach between you and, and your brand. The same thing we can apply it in ba- maybe banks is a little bit hard. Okay, hard, but it's not impossible. Okay, <laughs> uh, uh, with any type of product or services, that's how we can create advocacy. Just, just answer to your question. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. You know, um, I, I, I love, I, I love how we've like really went in depth when it comes to advocacy and when it comes to, um, you know, as you were explaining this, the. You know, that the trifecta, which was the PCD, the MCD, and the HCD. And you, you know, we said, you said actually d- during your your uh, explanation is that this not only will make the um, brand successful, it will not only bring it the awareness and the adoption that it needs, it will not only create the advocacy, but it's very important to know that this will make the brand um, non-static. It's growing, right. it's stretching and everything. And this happens when we do regular spring cleaning, <laughs> regular um, uh, kind of processes. And this is also something that you have uh, come up with. It's something that you've created, which is called the Assis method- methodology. You've yeah. mentioned it a minute ago. And this is basically what you're saying is that so that we can ensure all the processes are structured and aligned with the brand objective, the use of the ASIS methodology can be employed. And ASIS is a methodology that is an acronym for auditing auditing and assessment, strategy, execution, Mm -hmm. evaluation, and sustainability. I know we touched on sustainability. We've touched on the auditing when you were talking about, um, you know, the regular asking the customer, auditing from within, um, uh, finding uh, different ways of growth in that product or service, be it through the R&D. We've touched a little bit here and there. Do you think ASIS is something that is, a, it's, I cannot call it a final step. It's, it's a cycle that ha, the, the brand has to go through once in a while on regular basis. But do you think this is, without the cycle, your trifecta will not be, will not see its maximum um, uh, performance? You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. do we need a CS uh, to make the uh, PCD and MCD and HCD viable without a CS? You know, uh, it, it might be yeah. See, BCD and uh, MCD and HCD is the the cornerstone of any business. Correct. Okay. Yes. It's like planting. You put the seeds. Okay. And to planting these seeds, you need water. You need sun. You need air. You need uh, fertilizer. Okay. And you need what? A farmer. Of course, without farmer, you can't do anything. Of course, maybe with AI now with robotics, but. Uh, <laughs> But Aziz, even the robotics, they need a person behind <laughs> it, Yani. <laughs> yes. So Aziz is what they call a roadmap or, or like a blueprint to make sure, to make sure the cycle is, uh, uh, is coming, a healthy cycle for a brand. Mm-hmm. Because if you, uh, why are coming with these methodologies? Just, just in a nutshell. Why be CDM, CD and CD and why the, why the Aziz? Because I saw couple of brand strategies, strategies tools is thrown like this. As an engineer, I have to put it in toolbox. Mm. Okay, you have screwdriver, you have a hammer, you have oh, oh, each element or each tools in its right place. Okay, what they call Kambara, I think in Japanese. So when you need something, you will get it on t- just in time. Yes. You, you get it in time. So without waste any time, what they call it in Japanese, muda. What I mean is waste. So there is no waste. And anything you want, you have to take it from its right place. So the, the BCD, CDM, CD, and Aziz both together is like, it's like a puzzle 
you have or like a Lego. You have mm. to put it together to get the best results. Mm. Of course, you can just go with BCD and CDM uh, alone, independent. But who will monitoring? There's no monitoring uh, for, for each one of these. So Aziz is like I can control panel or quality management tools from A to Z from all that process. So you have to use it. That's why if you go through it, it's like a timeline happening. It's not just jumping randomly. Why Why auditing assessment? By the way, auditing and assessment will be internal and external. One of the things that, for example, we work in Oman and even in Bahrain um, uh, for government and even for uh, micro businesses, um, just we figure out one of the small, uh, not small, uh, it's a medium uh, enterprises, unfortunately, they don't have organization structure. And some of them, they have job descriptions overlap with another job description from the same level of managerial level. So wow. that's type of thing and, and, uh, and uh, assessment. And, uh, and the reason uh, behind the wasting of time and the clashes between decisions because of that. When we sat, to, when we sat with two to three doctors in, in that medium, uh, medium enterprises, we figure out there is a, like a sensitive relationship between two to three doctors together. Come on, how we can solve that? So it's uh, against edge to edge. So Aziz is not just something theoretical. We have to apply it. So for example, in the first age, take maybe two to three months to sort out this issue because it's related to regulations and job description and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So auditing and assessment will be internally. We cannot go to strategy and put fluffy things and interesting and and the infrastructure is, is not healthy. So that's number one, which is auditing and assessment internally first. Then we go externally, which means, for example, this uh, medical, uh, it was a medical in medical sector, a laboratory. Uh, they, they have like a package, their package to, to their uh, to their customer uh, is, uh, what they call it, it's not attractive enough. It's black. Mm. It's very dull. There's no life in it. Okay, so well, even even uh, the the touch of the papers, um, the elimination, uh, the colors, all these things we're taking care of. And alhamdulillah, they're listening to us. Even the uh, the reception it was like an old school of uh, uh, of laboratory. They change um, the colors, even the smell, the lighting. Everything, even for, uh, there's a small area for kids to take some blood test. Say, come on, guys, put some uh, cartoons here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's part of the experience. It's part of the brand. Yes, it's part of the experience. It's yeah. very, very dull, yeah. Okay. So, alhamdulillah, they, they listen to us and they change the environment. Uh, they're, it's not cost them anything almost. Yeah. It's, come on, yeah. The character from any stationery for two, three dinners, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, it's, it's very cheap. So that's about Aziz. Then we have to put the strategy, okay, after, like a doctor or like engineering, okay? You, you, uh, you have to have diagnosis, then you have to get a medicine. So after a strategy, we have to make sure there is execution for that strategy. Otherwise, it will be just something theory. Is it enough? No, it's not enough. Because even in the execution, we have to make sure this execution based on that strategy. That's why I have another E, which is, Evaluation. It's done or not done. And why it's not done 100 percent? Why there's 20 percent gap? Because maybe because of uh, a designer, because of a CEO, because of whoever <laughs> the, the reason behind. We have to uh, to do investigation. At the end, we have to sustain, which is very, very, very rare of company. They taking about sustainability. Sustainability means and as is and as you say before, like X and Y axis. In in, in X axis and expansion. Because your business, you want to expand either mm -hmm. physically or virtually. Physically means to open many branches, plus to expand in your products and services, or virtually the same thing, but it will be in virtual and virtual uh, version. And for the for the y axis, uh, for for the x axis, it will even the, for quantity, and for uh, y axis, it will be the quality, innovation for your products to become like standard. Because your USB in BCD, it will not stay for a long time. It would be easy copy cut from your competitors. So you always to be, you have to become at least five to ten steps ahead. Uh -huh. And how you can do that? By R and D, 
and by the sustainability you have to think ahead always uh, up to date uh, using all the grades and by the way uh, one of the threatened uh, industry happening uh, now in our region and all, all around the world is design why because of ai uh, design and content creation both yeah okay because you have ai you just put in chat gbt and even rephrase it and you humanize the chat gbt text will be something hilarious <laughs> the same thing for for the design so it's very challenging so we have to become up to date otherwise we'll be expired so that's an aziz and nutshell and we apply it by the way uh, for for um, many companies so it's not just and many different yeah. sizes so what you what yes. you're saying is that this blueprint the aziz yes. blue, you know if you take it like a blueprint this is yeah. like your regular checkup you know what I mean? Yes. It, and yes. it said it has to be on a regular basis because that's where yeah. you know, um, in the end, the thing which is the sustainability of your business. Yes. That's when you know any kind of um, growth strategies that you have, if there is any way an opportunity in it or not. But, right. you know, if I want to stay on that, um, uh, what you said when it comes to the sustainability, and now we're looking at businesses in the region who are with the help of everything that is happening that we have the tools that we have today between ai and of course like the technology it's a global market in your opinion um what do you recommend local companies to strike that balance between being appealing to their local tribe but at the same time um they have the potential of growth when it comes to like international appeal where it's like different market, different different type of customer, even if it's the same product or service. See, we, we have just to rethink about this statement. Always you have to think global, not necessarily, because some of businesses, they are successful to be stay local. So we don't have that, uh, what they call a change. Oh, if I'm starting local, I have to think global. I'm not, I'm not with that 100% because... Some of the business, their, their strength points is to stay local, okay? If you take it from that environment to another environment, it will dead. Same as like a fish. If you take it mm. from sea, okay, yeah, take the fish and please try to climb the tree. It cannot be, come on, okay? <laughs> it's against its nature. This yeah. part of the business, part. How much part, I don't know because we don't have that statistics. In what sectors, I don't know, you know, because some of the sectors, uh, it applies, some sectors not apply. But I'm talking about what they call it, think global, act local. Yes, it can't be. Why? Because at the end of the day, all the individuals, all the people all around the world, all around the world it's, there's a plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe it's a dangerous statement here happening. Maybe <laughs> there's a plan, there's a plan. Each one of us, regardless about his religion, regardless about his uh, race, colors, language, countries, background, they want to make us a, pro a, a products. They want to make us as consumptions to consume their products. That's why the one of the objectives of globalization, the negative side of globalization, is we have to be uh, con uh, consumers. That we have, for example, big brand, I don't want to name anything, okay? Uh, they, they, they are cross-border uh, from China to America to Vietnam to Saudi Arabia. Um, uh, and the common things, what they pretend their values have uh, open happiness. Maybe you know what I mean. So yes. we don't, I don't mention any name, okay? So, <laughs> so the common values is, uh, they, they want from us to become like, uh, by the way, it's not my, it's my words, even from American writers talking about this one, okay? And, and one, of, one of the books I read, they call it No Logo. No Logo, uh, yes. Uh, from a lady, I forget her name. And there are many books talking about this. We are with or without, I mean, we are with or against, but at the end of the day, as engineer, we have to think like a different perspective. It's not contra uh, like... Um, uh, I'm not against myself because I'm brand strategist. I have to promote brands, but at the, day, uh, the same day, at the same time, I'm a human. 
So I, 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 I try my best. I don't be a, like a bias. Yes, I'm in that for the business, but I have to think different way. So become about the think global, act local. It's depend on many things. Number one, it's about your vision and mission as, as a company. You want to stay at Canada for 20, 50 years. Oh, no, no, no. I want to start from Canada, just an example. For five years after that, I have to think to go to USA, then to Europe, then, 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 then. So you have a plan. So you have a timeline. And with timeline, you have action plan. And from action plan, you have break it down for many tasks. So you can, you can see your growth with time. That's number one. And what I call it, the vision is like eagle, you know, the eagle, eagle view. Yes. Falcon, Falcon view, they call it the vision because you can see all what's happening around your markets and even the global market. And we can have the action. So we have vision, not mission. We have a vision, we have action. Action truly, what I call it, ant view. <laughs> Why? Because we have all elements, uh, all animals here. Okay. So we have the Falcon view and we have the ant. Why ant? Because the micro things, micro level, you know, of working with your team and with your small tribe. Because at the end of the day, the smaller tribe, it can be, become bigger because all the same uh, common values happening all around the world. It's not like before 40, 50 years ago. Now with all that open platforms happening is hilarious. Is we are become like a copy cut, uh, unfortunately, uh, copy cut uh, models. You know, <laughs> that's what's happening. So that, maybe that's the negative side, but the positive side, you can understand more about your consumers now, about your target audience, about your people. So there's a potential for your business, even if are local, to become original, then from original become like a global. It's a, like a cycle. You start local yeah. and you think global, and you think global, you can reflect that in your uh, local. In your, yeah, it's like a tango. Yes. Local, yes, local absolutely. Local. And this is this is part of the growth. Like even if you're within the same, if you, not global. Let's say you're going growth within a region. You know, yes. you're you're going out, and then you're back again to the thinking yes. local in the new market because, but it's within the same region. And, and there's a potential, a potential in our region. I will just mention maybe two programs, which is I like like them. In Bahrain, we have Biban. Maybe you heard about it. Biban is like a, a a local version of Shark Tank. Oh yes, or Dragon, yes. Or, or Dragon, no, Dragon Den. Dragon. Okay. Dragon. And, and there's another version in Dubai, they call called Shark Tank Dubai. So, okay? Yes. So, so and just imagine that we have in, in two countries within the same area, Bahrain and UAE. Okay? So that these programs or these initiatives, that support the local to become regional mm. for growth, for sustainability, which is, I think, and I believe is very, very, very positive initiatives and I support um, um, any uh, small business or medium to participate. And by the way, no, nobody paid for me. Huh? But just it's not endorsement. <laughs> this is not an ad. Yeah. No, but yeah, I yeah. agree with you. I agree with you. This is also a very good uh, shift, you know, positive yes. shift that is happening in the region in the sense that you have uh, investors who are now willing yes. to, you know, right. give um, the, the right support uh, investment wise and connection and other th other, you know, we don't have that opportunity. We don't have that opportunity for a couple of years. Now it's yeah. open minded. Even it's like uh, it's like um, what they call it. Uh, I don't. I want to call it Kobe Cut from Shark Tank. Even even it's Kobe Cut. Why not? If it's some positive things, we can take it. That's why not? Fine. Yes. Yes. Of why course. not? Why not? We, we, we have to. We have to duplicate positive things from east or east or even from more or moon from from Mars or even from aliens. That's fine. <laughs> if it's a positive, why not? We yes, absolutely. It. It's like, what, why do you reinvent the wheel? Build on it, yes. you know? I, yes. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to, um, we're, I've taken so much of your time. So I want to like kind of wind down and go back to just, I have a couple of more questions, if that's possible. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, we, we spoke about brand. And one of the things that I mentioned in the uh, in the introduction is that you're also a published author. So you've you've authored a lot of books and you're known for your expertise through your articles as well uh, and the expertise of storytelling. 
And right. even now, today, we're talking today, and you give us all of the, those examples through the, you know, the art of storytelling. So in your opinion, how crucial is storytelling in the context of branding? And how can businesses effectively use that? Or are they using it enough in the MENA region, in the Middle East, North African region? See, storytelling is... Uh... Is, uh, is part of our culture. <laughs> Even we're talking about the Holy Month of Quran, 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 more, more than 60, 60% is like storytelling, you know, from Moses, Jesus, our prophet, and Abraham, and it's all stories. Why story? Story because uh, it's the perfect wagon to deliver values. I love that. Okay? It's a perfect wagon to deliver, uh, to deliver values because it will it will stick in your minds. You know, you remember the campfire? Yes. From 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 ice ice age, <laughs> all the families coming from Indians, you know, coming and even Bedouin in, in Arab they coming, you know, all around uh, and telling stories at, at the night. So it's why, because the campfire is the symbolism of storytelling. All the tribe, all the families coming together. Um, and telling story and the story there is a value behind it it will be part of their character so this part of our culture and even our, our religion and beliefs unfortunately we don't use it till now i believe now we use maybe five percent only imagine just five percent you say why do you say five not five point five i said almost five percent you know i don't have any statistics or facts and figures but but based, based in uh, uh, in my uh, in my experience and and uh, what I see, uh, what, what I'm seeing, it's just five percent. Why? Because I have, I can see there's ninety five percent that's not used. Mm. I will give you just an example that's happening between me and and the client in Emirates about the 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 power of storytelling. We create a brand identity for a perfume. They call it Thneyan. Okay. Thneyan is a, a name of a boy with. A, with the special needs, okay. His story is is, is very touchy because uh, doctors uh, uh, telling uh, his parents that maybe he will die. You know, during uh, you know, uh, I think it was his six seven months. Okay. And um, uh, his parents praying to God to Allah, uh, he, he will become good. And, and Alhamdulillah, uh, nothing happened. He just. Uh, the, the, uh, the mother delivered Thneyan, uh, delivered Thneyan uh, in good condition, but with uh, special needs. And now he's seven years old. Alhamdulillah, he's beautiful. He, he's living now in, in, in Abu Dhabi. And uh, his grand, uh, his grandfather telling me after I sit with him, please, his, this is a story. See, he start with the story. Okay. Yeah. And I want something that will give or that will leave a trace behind his story. I want to spread the positive energy, the positive things about his story that you have to believe in God. You know, it's not always about logic. It's not always about what doctors say. Something there's a behind logic. There's something between you and God, between you and Allah. So that's that story inspired me to come up with something totally different from a brand identity, which is we come up with the perfume as a concept, number one. Number two, Thneyan as a name, we are not just using like typography. No, 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 no. We use the name Thneyan using the sound wave to create the logo, the name itself. You get my point when I that's, say Thneyan. That's brilliant. I'm smiling and I'm like, I'm, I'm so <laughs> taken by the story. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so when you say Thneyan, the, the sine wave, we take it as it is, without any editing, nothing. As it is, we create the logo based on the, in, in the sine wave or the name of Thneyan. Thneyan. Number three, the story I can share with you by WhatsApp, um, uh, the, uh, the story in Arabic and in English version, it will be in a QR code in the bottle. When you scan it, you can hear the story of Thneyan from starting to end with the music, of course, Arabic or English. Yes. So that's the power of storytelling. See, see, we are we are not selling perfume. We are selling a story behind this perfume. 
Yes, so of we're course. Talking, we're, talking about the thing. we're talking about emotion. We're talking about values. We're talking something that touch your heart when, when you hear about this authentic story, this uh, very touch uh, feeling uh, story about this small boy. Yeah, so, and, and I'm believing in miracles. <laughs> and also yes, about believing yes. in miracles, yes. Believing in miracles, of course. Well, uh, and that's the power of storytelling. That's why I said uh, we have just with five, five person. We have a lot from our heritage, from our, uh, from even for our, from our proverbs in Arabic, from Quran, from Islamic values, from Arabic values. We have a lot, a lot, a lot. We are not using it uh, till now. So yeah. the storytelling is, is one of the uh, the most powerful tools for for brands to embed it in in, in our culture and to become part of our daily life. Yes. Yeah, and, and I think you also, um, you would also agree that storytelling is one of the most powerful tools that humanizes brands, you yes, know, like even on a, on a business level, let's say the best way to humanize any brand is to actually have a, a brand story. It doesn't have to be, a, you know, as touching and as personal as this one, yes, but there has yeah. to be a story that can, that actually becomes part of the, you know, we go back to the football club. They, ha I'm sure there's a story behind every single one of them and the, you know, the, the number of uh, uh, games they lost and how they won the championship. And, you know, I'm sure fans know the story and the history behind it. It's, it's important. Right. It's part of belonging. Absolutely. I totally agree. Um, and you know, to to stay on the point of storytelling, do you you know as a as a public as a you know an author and a a, a writer yourself, um, do you see the role of digital publishing, um, you know, especially for professionals while they're building their personal brand? Do you see that um, there's a there's a potential of it so that there is some kind of brand a brand authority building? You know, can you can you think like? Do you think that individuals should, you know, leverage publishing, even if it's digital publishing, to build their brands? Uh, I I read a question from Cora. They call it Cora, the website. Cora, yes. Yeah, it was a question till now. I read it maybe for from four to five years. Or maybe, I don't remember when. The question was as follow: a question to an expert in marketing. What will be the best things that I can do to market myself? That's the question. And the answer within three to four words. The answer is write a book. Probably, oh, wow. <laughs> Why writing a book? Number one, because you show yourself that you are an expert. Writing a book is not easy, even with AI, because everybody can discover that. But writing a book, that's mean you are research, you are reading, you are brainstorming, you are asking, you're getting feedback, you are writing, rewriting, telling your papers, writing again, you know, as a hassle. But it's a beautiful journey. That's number one. Number two, you will become number one in your in your field within your region. And even they say uh, one percent of all population in, in all around the world uh, is writing a uh, having a book. One percent. Wow. That's okay, nothing. That's nothing. <laughs> so why you don't have to become one of this one person? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's number two. And number three, it will become, become like your marketing tool always, sustainable marketing tools. If you go to event, if you go to VIP meeting, if you go to your clients. By the way, I'm an author of this book. Please have, have a copy of my book. Okay, it's not book, it's just not book. I just give you an example. Okay, so <laughs> that will be marketing tools. Number four, it will be as Gary V said that you can use and reuse and recycle your content through your original content, means from the book. From the book, yeah. You can re reuse it again, maybe through infographic sometimes, maybe audio, maybe interview, maybe QA, maybe presentation, many things. So regardless, it will be published as a printed or digital. At the end of the day, Rana, she wrote a book about this or about that. That's, that itself is a credit. So always support and, and uh, why? Because 
when, when you write a book or even a research paper, that means you share your thoughts with others. Mm. And sharing that will, accum it will be accumulated knowledge in your field. Unfortunately, some of mine said that I don't want to share. And even by the way, uh, Rana, some of my, uh, I don't say a friend, but some of my, you know, uh, within my network, they say, um, uh, you are crazy. Why don't, why are you publishing this? Uh, maybe so someone will take it and write a book about it or maybe elaborate it. I said, come on, if I keep it for myself, it's not mean, it's mean nothing. I have to share. If somebody will take it and elaborate it, that's fine. That's fine. Because the source who create that one, of will course, always be Allah, of course, it will be uh, like spring, you know, the spring, the, yes. the source of uh, the source of water, it can can create another, another, another. And by the way, about that, uh, the BCD and uh, so, uh, the link between ROC, ROC and ROI, I just come up with now, uh, within the interview now. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so, so it's, uh, we have to have that mindset of sharing, writing, reading, and, and even uh, critique each other, because this is the healthy way to grow in our sectors, either in marketing or branding or brand strategy, just name it, and medical, whatever the sectors. Because if Rana just keep her thoughts for herself, I keep, how, how we can grow? As one of the wisdom said, okay, if you have apple and you will give me apple, I will have two apples. I, I, will, take, I will take your apple. Yeah. But if I have one thought and, and you give me your thought, well, we have two thoughts. Two you thoughts. Know? So th that's what they call sharing is caring. And even Imam Ali, he said sh um, in Arabic, Man shawar an -nas, you have to translate that. Man shawar an -nas, means uh, who, who consultant or yeah, sharing. Yeah, who consult the people. Uh -huh. hey, uh, I, I forgot the second part. <laughs> what did <laughs> you say? <laughs> man shawar an sharakum uqulahum. Ah, share the ah. Uh, how can I say? Literally means you share their mind, but yeah. but it's actually the of sharing course. of ideas. Yeah. How can I share ideas by asking by you know Q and A by just throw ideas? So uh, if I share my knowledge with you, I will take your brain. I mean, not <laughs> literally. Yes, of <laughs> course. And and you will know if your idea is a good idea or yes. what kind yes. of uh, changes or you know upgrades. Right. Yeah. So that, that's basically, uh, that's just to answer a question. Yes, I encourage everybody just to uh, oh, write a book that's been 100 pages. Come on, no, not necessarily. Maybe 20 pages is enough, even 10 pages. And I and I figured out that from LinkedIn, I, I said many books, small books, e-books from LinkedIn, maybe 10 pages, but very intensive about things. Yeah. Maybe 20 pages. It's not necessarily, unfortunately, right now, because our it's mindset. not the traditional our, thinking of a book. Yeah, we can do you know anything. Why? Yes, because our frame of thinking based in all system means mm. when I say write a book, come on, books means 120 or 300 pages. Who said that? Even small ebook, 10 pages per month or 10 pages every two months, that's enough. Yeah. So not I, and at the end and uh, uh, at the end of the year can collect it together and become a book. I will share with you one of the books that you bought for me, and thank you, Rana, for this. Oh. Okay. <laughs> See, this book, I figure out, this is the same thought, I, this Mr. Fabian, I have uh, had an interview with him before a couple of months. This uh, this book is just, uh, uh, he have a therapy every week, I think, in Instagram. Oh. And uh, after after he collect all the, his thought will become like a book. That's it. That's brilliant. That's, That's brilliant. It. And so it's like it's it like means, wisdom. It's like lessons learned. Yeah. You take one yeah. one lesson and it could help you with a lot of things. Yeah. Of course. So just uh, to answer your question, Rana, yes. Write I a book. Encourage... This yeah, is what you're book. telling me, Rana. Write a book. <laughs> we will write a book together, inshallah. Oh, I, it will be my honor. It will be my honor. This is something you know. There is a book I I recently finished. It's for Daniel Priestley, and it's called um, uh, "Key People of Influence," and it talks about the importance of a personal brand. And mm -hmm. one of his, like you know, he gives you first do this, then do this, then then like number three, I believe. I think it's number three. Write a book. 
And I uh, looked at that chapter and I'm like, oh my God, I, this is like the hardest step ever because it's, um, where do you start? What idea, Where you know, when you have so many things and, exp, you know, and you've experienced so many things in your life, it becomes yeah. blurred. It's a blurred line between what you learned and what you created, yeah. you know, it, there's yeah. a blurred line. So it's, um, it's a very, um, humbling step i believe when you decide to write a book it humbles the person because then you really need to it's part of the self um, you know evaluation and of course self growth i have an idea but at the same time i need to humble myself to put it all together i don't know that that was my thought for <laughs> you know um i want to end this with um with something that I told you before we start the uh, the conversation, how much I am so grateful that our paths has crossed, and we uh, we've met each other thanks to social media. I have to say that, but we've we've crossed our paths, and there were so many lessons learned from my end. Um, so many lessons learned that I, I am so honored to have you here. And I really wanted to share some of the, you know, some of the things that you put. And I really, really invite everybody who's listening or watching this to, to follow your, your journey when it comes, especially on um, LinkedIn, because the material and the articles that you write are very, um, not all the time. Some of them are, are provocative. I have to say that, but m mm -hmm. most of them are like um, a masterclass. I remember reading something and I sent you a message and I was like, this is a masterclass. Like, uh, yeah. because there's, um, there's a very easy, there's an easiness in reading and there's this logical sequence that you put in your articles that I very much admire because you kind of, as you mentioned, the building blocks, the, the Lego. So I wanted to thank you so much for that. I've learned so much. And I would like to end this beautiful conversation that I really don't want it to end with um, your thoughts on the new, the new and upcoming you know, brand strategists to be or the marketeers to be, what advice would you give them? You know, the MENA region is very complex. So yeah. what advice would you give them to navigate this beautiful uh, yet complex and very nuanced, culturally nuanced region? See, uh, number one, uh, I'm still student and I will student till... Uh, to the last day of my life. Because if you have that mindset, you always keep learning. So you don't have to put yourself, uh, I, I always to tell him to you know, some lectures, please don't uh, uh, title me as an expert because I see myself still I'm a student. Okay, e even with the certificates, whoever, whatever that brands I'm working with, I'm working with Bentley, with Aramco, with Kleenex, formal one with big brands but still i believe i'm a student and i'm 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 happy i become students always that's why i'm studying phd because i'm i'm i want to come back as a student uh, because if you have that mindset of students you will not stop learning if you think you are self as a teacher you will stop that's what i believe maybe i'm wrong but that's from my perspective that's i agree moment. with you i totally agree and, with and, and, and number number two is in our region, what's happening in the last five years is hilarious in positive way, of course. And uh, <laughs> uh, and with whether, whether I call it the open source knowledge uh, is uh, fascinating, such as what they call it MOOC. MOOC, which is all ma ma massive open online courses. Mm. Now, whatever you want, you can take it for free, almost for free, even uh, cost uh, hamburger. Okay, mm -hmm. but not for McDonald's, of course. It's boycott. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> so for example, you go to Udemy, you go to UDCT, you go to Coursera, you have Domestica, you have LinkedIn, you have Google, you have Microsoft, you have uh, Oxford. You have zillions of options that you can learn anything, literally anything, from your platform, which is even from your uh, mobile phone or from your desktop. Uh, 
So there's no excuse, I don't know. Mm. I don't know, it's not applicable now at all. Even I'm telling my, my, my kids, don't say, I don't know. You Google it, you go and, and read and come back to me. Okay, that's the problem. And, and number two, about the, about the future, uh, there are many challenges. Number one is become up to date. That's mm. number one. Number two is to take that up to date and customize it for your local market. It's not copycat what's happening in US. You can you can apply it in your uh, <laughs> in your local market. Come yeah. on, it cannot. Even they call it globalization and 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 against that globalization. Even Thomas Friedman said, and I am against this man, but he said something uh, that when you see the golden arcs, that's mean the McDonald's, in two countries, that's mean there's no war that will happen in these two countries. You get the point? <laughs> yes. <laughs> because, because, you know, the America, it's, you know, uh, yeah. concord all these countries, so there's no clashes. But this is statement in his uh, book, I think they call it uh, the Lexis and Flat World or something, I forget his book. Okay? Um, uh, it's not applicable anymore. Because of the globalization now, is upside down. Now what's happening in Russia, for example, taking McDonald's out and they become with their own uh, brand. Mm -hmm. So what's happening in, in all around the world now, uh, I think is a positive. Why? Because we don't have um, UCD, it's something new, uh, new one, huh? <laughs> you see me in United States centric design, no more, okay? So, so there's a, like a different polar now happening from China, from Russia. Mm -hmm. That's why I say, well, when I say geopolitics is very important, even for brand strategy, because it's not just copy cut from one country. With my respect, with all that uh, experience from the uh, United States, and thank you for the knowledge coming from people mm -hmm. uh, and experts from United States people, not government, of course, I'm talking about people. Okay, but now it's something happening from different, for different countries, from Japan. They have a, a, a brilliant experience in, in, in branding from different culture, even Korea, China, um, Turk, Turkey, Iran, Malaysia, Saudi Arabia. So mm. all these countries we have to take care of and see how they can. We can take the best of the best, what they call the best practice, and we can apply it, whatever that is suitable for us, local, and how we can scale and become scalable. If we think about regional, then it will be global. Uh, in my last article in, in LinkedIn about Barbie, okay, and yes. in based in my based in my first first or second book, which is available in Amazon, which is I love my doll, uh, uh, the love story between a human and doll, uh, talking about the potential that's happening in, in Arab region from Fulla. Unfortunately, they don't have sustainability. It's just Fulla is kidnapped or hijacked. I don't know what's happening to her. Vanish, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, they have a potential from Egypt, from uh, from Kuwait, or from Malaysia, and from uh, UAE, or from some characters. Where are they? I don't know why. What's happening? That's mean we have a potential, but that potential is still potential. Potential is meaningless if we don't take it to physical. Mm. From so idea to action. From yes, idea to action. You can say potential, potential. Okay, potential to one. <laughs> Take that potential to action, as you said. Okay, so we can we we can put the KPI for that key performance indicator. Yes, we can we can we can see it. We can feel it. We can see the products uh, in our in our daughter's hand. Just an example. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. we can see we wearing t-shirts. We can see wearing watch. We can, we can see it in sport in our daily life. That will be the indicator of the brands can create a tribe. If the brand can leave a trace behind, if the brand can. Um, write a storytelling. Without all these things, it will be, sorry, it will be just words in the book or words just in notebook, nothing more than that. The indicator is us. If we live, if we drink, if we wear, if we use something that it will be part of our daily life, that we can say that is this is the brand. Without that, sorry, uh, just in the theoretical part, we are not in the action part. Yeah, it's just a theory. It's just an idea. Does it really have value without it? Not really. Um, I am so grateful for you. Thank you so much for accepting my invitation. And thank you so much for another one of your master classes. 
uh, <laughs> I will make sure that all of your details are in the show notes. And I really hope to have you once again, maybe on Let's Make Waves or we do uh, more work together. I'm always, always, always in awe of your work. Thank you so much for your time, John. Thank you, really thank you Rana, for your time. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for your humbleness. And uh, you are very humble, by the way. <laughs> thank you. And I, I, I uh, of course, I don't have to advertise or marking you because, you know, mashallah, you yeah, will know. For podcasts, and I'm very happy that you are sustaining your podcast, which is I always, uh, you know, up to date and listen, listening to it. It's either my honor. Through LinkedIn or through even podcast, because at the end of the day, this ta- this part of sharing and and uh, digging more about the brand strategy and brand, it will be adding value for all of us, for for us, for both of us, and for even for the audience. And from from the audience, it will become adding value to them as the consumers or even uh, as uh, as clients. Because at the end of the day, we want to leave a trace behind. We want yes. to leave a story. We want to make a positive change, inshallah. Inshallah. I hope so. <laughs> thank inshallah. you so much once again for your time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rana. See you. And that was the end of my conversation with Jafar. I really enjoyed having that discussion with him. I hope you did too. And I hope you uh, were able to collect the information and the value uh, out of this conversation. Uh, For me, I really enjoyed how he broke down his methodology about designing brand success. That was the, one of my favorite parts of this conversation. Um, There's so much to talk to him about, but as you saw, it was already, I've taken already a lot of time for him. And so um, I'm really looking forward to having him again on this podcast. If you want to connect with Jafar, all of his details will be in the show notes. You can find him on different platforms. Everything will be in the show notes. So please um, do follow and um, check out his news and his writing and his articles and the amazing work that he is doing. And thank you again. It's really, I'm really grateful to have you for this uh, for this episode. I hope you did enjoy it. As always, please don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. I'll see you next week. Take care and keep making waves.